Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Wednesday, April 24th. Um, first Selectman Jim Hayden along with Selectman Doreen and we'll be join, joined shortly by Selectman Ziobro. Call this meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, April 24th. Next to order of business is public comment. Seeing none, I will move into correspondence. I don't know if you uh, had a chance to go online to see the art show uh, at the airport, but the correspondence regards uh, a, uh, a request that I got from a parent of, oh, you know, is there any free parking or anything like that? So. Uh, what, uh, what it is, is it's a four town, uh, the four airport towns uh, art exhibit of elementary school age students. It's terrific. I haven't had a chance to go myself yet, but I will over the weekend. And uh, it's always a great job. And uh, the, uh, um, so anyways, I contacted the airport authority and they made arrangements for folks if they uh, needed to, if they were within business hours, uh, they could uh, get their parking validated uh, and they were t looking at their children's uh, artwork. Nice. So that was a very nice. Uh, uh, Mrs. Goff, uh, who uh, teaches art at, for the school district, uh, always uh, brings out the best in the kids and it's always a great show. Uh, and, uh, and applaud our students and their artistic. The um, next uh, order of business, uh, next uh, item on the correspondence is the um, general government financials. I had handed out the sheets uh, last meeting but didn't hand out the narrative. So uh, I've got the narrative. Pretty much everything is about what we thought it was in the past. With a Social Security, we're a little unfavorable with the budget right now. That could be, we could have gotten the formula wrong, or it could be uh, some of the private jobs haven't been uh, paid for yet. Uh, the uh, DPW uh, has uh, come down significantly, as uh, uh, has the police department, uh, and uh, they were unfavorable with the budget. Um, uh, the police department unfavorability is due to the uh, uh, we weren't full staffed. We covered overtime in October, November, and December on, on, on open shifts, and um, that cost us some dollars, specifically with state trooper overtime. So uh, we're making good headway on that, although I don't anticipate that we will get all the way back between now and the end of June. Um, data services uh, probably will be a little over, although we're making progress on that. Public buildings, um, there, there are some expenses that we've occurred, incurred rather in the upcoming month that probably will cause that to, to uh, be a little over during, during uh, the end of the year. All in all, our uh, budget is continued to trend slightly below the budget, so we're on target to come in uh, less than target, uh, less than budget. Uh, we'll return the 54000 and without it, I don't want to jinx it, without any unanticipated issues, we'll return the $54,000 plus uh, the t special town aid road fund. We uh, have not had to spend that. So if we, uh, you know, I anticipate we won't have to spend it. Uh, so that would be $104,000 off the top that we'll be returning in the upcoming fiscal, I mean at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, also, um, put in some information from cost uh, that was uh, part of uh, a um, conference call that I had on, on teacher pension costs. Uh, the, uh, the, the town responsibilities for teacher pensions was removed from the bill, um, but the governor continues to talk uh, about it. Uh, there was a meeting today that I saw on the news with CCM, of which we're a member of the town of also where they uh, had some discussions with him regarding the pensions. Um, at least at this, this point, he, he is saying 25% of the normal teacher's pension costs uh, to the towns and school boards. Um, we certainly have some concerns about that. Is it the proverbial camel's nose under the tent? Uh, I mean, it does 25% become in five years 100%. Uh, 
also, if we're taking responsibility, we don't have, uh, um, we, we don't control the school uh, pension plan that's controlled by the state. We also, you know, is it something that we can make as part of the negotiations, the total amount of pie that we have to share for compensation and benefits? So there's lots to, that needs to be discussed. Um, and it's all at the state house at this point. Um, and um, basically that's, that's about it. So the way that they're proposing to do this would be by decreasing the education cost sharing. So wouldn't be something that we would have to pay as much it would be a reduction in revenue? The, uh, it originally when it was rolled out, it was rolled down as a redu reduction in, in revenue. It appears now that it may not be that. It might be an actual bill, but the Board of Finance has accounted for the perceived amount of money, but they've done it as a reduction for, from, uh, from state aid. But the money is still there in the, in the budget, so. Uh, that would be something that they would have to, uh, the Board of Finance would have to deal with. So that the funds are anticipated uh, by the Board of Finance, uh, and they've done it right now as a reduction in aid. I think it's fifty-two thousand uh, dollars. It's a whole total of hundred and some odd, one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars reduction in education cost sharing, of which fifty some odd thousand would be the perceived increase in pension costs. I uh, just want to let you know that I'm attending a grant writing class uh, that CCM is putting on, and um, that'll be May 21st uh, as we continue to do what we can to, uh, to see if there's money out there that can help defray some of the needs that we have. Uh, and if the budget is successful, currently it'll have uh, $7,500 in it for grant writers, so I thought it was a good opportunity to learn more about it and the resources are out there. The um, next piece of correspondence is uh, from the airport regarding the uh, noise meeting. Uh, so he's firming up the, uh, uh, the meeting with the resident regarding uh, the concerns about noise. So the, uh, the, uh, we'll be there as the town of East Miami consultants from uh, that uh, the airport has and the FAA and the CAA. So it should be a very good, uh, meeting their time is still being worked out but now that uh, the uh, chance of snowstorms have uh, abated the airport's going full strength and they say they're holding off having a meeting until they knew the weather was not going to cause a problem because you know if it snows it causes all sorts of problems with operations it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't meet but it does if you've got experts coming in uh next uh Thing is a uh, is uh, I was copied on it by Dave Kilbon and I also re had received an original email uh, from a resident who has a concern about the establishment of the new contingency fund for the Board of Ed by the Board of Finance that refers to unexpected money from past years. In this particular letter, Dave just went through and ex explained the, the state statute that governs this and also what the Board of Finance action is. Uh, they did agree, uh, Joe, I think it was $48,000 uh, uh, $48, to create a, uh, what they call a non-recurring fund uh, that uh, is under uh, the discretion of the Board of Education on how that money gets spent. Uh, by state statute, they are able to start to, uh, if, when they return money, they're able to request the governing body, in this case the Board of Finance, that, they, uh, that some of that dollars return to the Board of Education. And they did exercise that uh, last month, and they were given the $48,000 for the account. Uh, and uh, more to come. second set of letters is also regarding that clearing up uh, uh, some questions on the teacher pension money from the same resident uh, and we've talked about that at this point. The uh, town participates with the Metropolitan District Commission uh, on a household hazardous uh, collection schedule and the um, collection uh, schedule. So we are a town that uh, 
is not a one of the eight original members of MDC, but we are one of a town that does research services from them. So as a non-member, we also opt to use them to help with the uh, hazardous waste collection. So that'll be in East Granby on October 12th. I'm sorry, it'll be actually in Windsor Locks for several years we've shared uh, with Windsor Locks, and that'll be October 12th. But the reason why I bring it up is that the uh, household hazardous waste uh, is starting to be collected uh, on May 4th and that'll be in Newington, and then May 11th in Hartford. Now this is on our website and also posted on our bulletin board, and it lists uh, June 1st for Windsor, June 15th for Wethersfield, June 23rd for West Hartford, June, July 13th for Rocky Hill, September 7th for Bloomfield, the 21st of September for West Hartford, uh, the 12th for East Granby, Windsor Locks, and the 26th for East Hartford. The reason why I bring it up is you don't have to wait until October 12th if you've got hazardous waste uh, that you want to dispose of, and you know that could be, uh, you know, I mean, paint is part of it, but you know, a lot of different things that you have concerns about, uh, you would be able to uh, to dispose of it at any of those towns, uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, so you actually have two, four, six, eight, ten opportunities over the next nine months to get rid of your uh, hazard, household hazardous waste. Uh, it ranges from anything to drain cleaners, epoxy products, fertilizers, flea repellents, floor care products, gasoline and, di and diesel, glues, herbicides, insecticide, kerosene and fuel oil, uh, mercury, mercury switches, mercury ther thermometers, thermostats, mothballs, oven cleaner, paint, pesticides, polyurethane, pool chemicals, power steering fluid, road flares, um, transmission fluid, wood stains, wood preservatives, and I skipped maybe about 30% of those. <laughs> so it's a pretty full list. It's on the MDC uh, website, um, and you can go www.themdc.com, uh, or you can go on the town website, eastgrambyct.org, for a complete listing. If folks haven't been to Town Hall recently, uh, besides the fact that we are repaving uh, or, or paving the parking lots and Center Street and eventually Memorial Street, along with next week and the week after, starting to go into streets uh, throughout the town, uh, the first street will be Seymour and then we'll follow with other streets. Um, if you haven't been in town, you, uh, in the center of town, you, uh, you'll see a change by the uh, flagpole. Uh, the DPW has done a lot of work where they took some overgrowth out and then put up some nice ring of rocks and some nice marble chefs uh, per the request of the Veterans Association uh, in town, which was working with us uh, to make it a little bit more of a memorial than what it was at the, at the time. Um, the email that I included in the packet is from a resident who, uh, and veteran who just wanted to uh, mention how happy she was uh, with uh, the appearance. Um, and actually what was really uh, uh, very impressive, uh, our DPW supervisor was just finishing something up uh, there and all of a sudden this older gentleman stopped his car, I don't recommend it, it was in the middle of the road, and got out and saluted the flag. Uh, so that was pretty, pretty moving, pretty moving. Uh, the veterans group is looking to, the reason why the rocks are ringed around is that it, they will reflect, uh, and the veterans group is looking at getting plaques for the rocks, which would reflect all six of the branches of service. Uh, the Eversource has notified us that uh, they're doing uh, some maintenance on uh, activities. Uh, near uh, the Suffield border near Newgate Road to the Granby Town border near Turkey Hills Road and to the Bloomfield uh, Town border near South Main Street. Uh, so they're maintaining the infrastructure so that you can see heavy equipment going in and out or you, it could be anything from uh, equipment uh, to uh, making sure that the brush and undercurrent, uh, undergrowth is taken care of. So the, uh, for larger undertakings, including structure replacement projects, they'll give us a more detailed project schedule and location. At this point, we haven't received that, so I think we're running the mill at this point. 
got a very interesting email, and I'm going to meet with this uh, individual on Friday. She um, uh, her, uh, is a resident of town, and uh, she uh, has, uh, I've met her a couple times at Resilience Grows Here events, and she's reaching out uh, in hopes that East Granby would become a hidden hero city. And um, what uh, that does, it would be, it's uh, done by the Elizabeth Dole Foundation, and Tom's joined the foundation and participating communities uh, across the nation that streamline services, share best practices for addressing the needs of veterans, their caregiver and the caregivers at a local level. So the uh, there's currently in Connecticut three hidden hero cities, Montville, New London, and Salem, and she's coming to speak with me on Friday to see to provide the information to see if it's something these family would like to do. And uh, of course, uh, if it's something that we decide to do, we'll do that as a board of selection at our next meeting. I uh, went, to the, as a town, we are uh, looking for uh, some funds from the Hartford Foundation to help us with our kitchen renovation at the Senior Community Center. There was a meeting uh, that they held uh, where they were looking for feedback. I thought, you know, since we had an application in, it probably made sense for me to attend. Uh, and and and, uh, and I did, and it's just an email acknowledging that uh, I was there, and that uh, uh, they are going to continue to work with us uh, on a general perspective. Uh, their goal is to get more involved with the, with the towns that they service, uh, so that they can understand what the needs are, and provide some foundation dollars. I uh, had a. Um, uh, next piece of correspondence, a uh, resident was uh, uh, copied me on an email to the Board of Ed Chair and uh, just has requested some documents um, regarding uh, uh, primarily uh, the study that did, uh, looked at uh, consolidation of school districts or regionalization or whatever you would like to call it. So. <laughs> Want to make aware of it. Also, a, a resident had a concern uh, that uh, the hearing for the budget, uh, which was April 16th, plus the subsequent Board of Finance uh, meeting uh, at, at the conclusion of the hearing, wasn't on, uh, it was taped, but it wasn't on GCTV. Um, because it was at the high school, that's not anything that GCTV tapes, so uh, we don't have the access to it, and we depend on someone to edit it and send it to GCTV. Uh, as of this morning, it still wasn't on there. Um, so, uh, you know, certainly uh, at our next uh, meeting and budget hearing uh, next year, we'll uh, take whatever appropriate steps to make sure that we have timeliness in uh, and the videos being put up. The person that wrote me the letter was concerned that it was going to be a Board of Finance meeting uh, last uh, night, which was our town meeting night, and it was just a um, town meeting which adjourned to the referendum um, you know, of May 7th, and the, the meeting held on the 23rd, the town meeting, just was a presentation again of what was at the town hearing. So nobody missed anything, and I believe our, our uh, uh, tape of, is on, you know, the town meeting tape is, is up, unless I got it confused and my finance hearing was up, but I know one of them's up. Also uh, included in the correspondent package, a, the uh, Capital Region Council of Governments legislative report for April 18. Um, we certainly have lots of people that want to report on legislative uh, things, yes. uh, crowd, sure cost, CCO. Uh, the um, one of the, the highlights uh, they were talking about is the uh, there's a lot of anti-toll rallies out there, uh, and uh, uh, they were uh, just reporting on that. At this point, the governor is still maintaining that he needs tolls to address the infrastructure, and we'll see where that goes. Sure. And speaking of legislative reports, I've got the CCM uh, uh, legislative uh, 
report regarding the municipal, un uh, municipal unity uh, week, which was an opportunity to learn and share. Basically what they did is they gave uh, towns a legislative uh, uh, session of, uh, 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 talking about all the different things going on at the legislature, I should say, in the, uh, at the state house. Um, I was at a different meeting and you were unable to attend, so I'm glad we got the notes and we can see what transpired. And they talked about uh, labor bills of importance. Uh, and uh, one of those is paid medical, paid family medical leave. I uh, saw an interesting statistic, um, and it was put out by the, uh, the business group. Um, but it's, uh, they were saying that uh, you would, if the family leave passes, we as employees would, would, it would contribute about half a percent of our salary per year towards this fund. And the, uh, the estimates that CBIA did would be that uh, for every one person getting a claim that would be supported with 47 people's contributions. So they're not quite sure if the math works at this point. And I know I've heard that before from other organizations that you know, if they continue to have dialogues and tweak it. But uh, last I knew, it started to get a little traction on the paid medical leave. Seems pretty confident in that one. So it's not any, you know, it's it's not a, t a tax uh, direct tax, but it is uh, uh, insurance that would be covered uh, through uh, a payroll deduction. Welcome, John. Thank you. The uh, live back at six fifty two. Okay, that's all. How far in are we? We're um, pretty good uh, through the correspondence. We just went through uh, the CCM capital report. And so then there's a, a um, correspondence uh, from David Lehman, who is the uh, commissioner uh, for the Department of Economic and Community Development. And he's talking about ways they're going to work with the Connecticut uh, Department of Administrative Services to cut red tape. So the, uh, the first step towards that is House Bill 7385 which they are looking to, uh, to get past, which will cut paperwork for businesses wishing to do business for the state. The Department uh, of Administrative Services developed the bill. And it's one of uh, the initiatives that DAS is doing to um, simplify redundant processes, uh, reduce manual processes with the goal of bringing every transaction online, modernize the state's e-sourcing system, reduce duplicative uh, functions across state agencies and centralize and consolidate purchasing of enterprise systems and software. So. There is one piece of additional correspondence uh, that uh, was the CCM uh, state legislative program, and that is more information that came out of the unity um, meeting from last week uh, in more detail than what we covered before. Uh, the uh, I'm the word here, and I buried my agenda. So let me uh, get it right on top here. It's nice. Let me find my agenda, so at least I can stay consistent here. We also have a couple minutes uh, that we uh, can have before we go into executive session. All right. If it's agreeable, we'll go out of order a little bit, and then we'll do the minutes of uh, of April 10th, and then uh, separately the minutes of April 17th. I can make a motion on the April 10th minutes. Second. Okay, John, John. Wait for a minute. 
discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And then we move it to April 17th. That's a motion to approve those minutes. I'll second that. John, John, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. And the next, uh, moving into old business, 6A, uh, Seymour Road, uh, traffic signage. We um, held off putting the sign only because of the fact we're going to be paving that street in the next uh, two weeks. So we're holding off putting the signage up. Uh, God forbid we made it this long and we take it out with a pickup truck or something right. or, a, or a, uh, a vendor's truck. So um, anyways, we will, uh, uh, it'll be installed after the paving. Uh, 6B tax incentives, no update. Uh, and 6C uh, Copper Hill Terrace cul de sac property. I reminded our town attorney again about that. I know he sent uh, information to the resident uh, and hasn't received anything back as of yet. So there's not a lot of updates to the old business, but you have that now. Uh, and uh, Session though? I was going to suggest that we do the exit. So, can I have a motion to go into executive section? This is the first one. Are we going to have two or are we we're going to have two? Okay, so I'll make a motion to go into executive session to discuss these contract negotiations and invite the attorney, Kevin Dineen. I'll second that. And no votes will be taken. Uh, we will uh, return uh, shortly. Uh, but at this point, uh, we are now, uh, first of all, a uh, motion was made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. 657. At 657. So we will go into executive session. Returned from executive session at 7.31. And we had taken um, um, one item, uh, new business out of order, no, actually minutes, and all business out of order, uh, then went to executive session, uh, exited at 7.31, next order business is new business, which is the budget referendum ballot questions. The, uh, this is similar to what we've done in the, not similar, it's the same format that we've done in the past. Right. I think it looks fine. I mean, I know uh, one, one person asked if we can just signal out or single out the no questions, but I don't know, can that be Well, done? we did the research on that and the, our vendor said no, they're not able okay. to do that. So I and I, as a matter of fact, I got back to the resident right. and explained it to her. Okay. So. Is there a so, motion? I mean, what do you think about the questions, Joe? Anything? I'm comfortable. With yeah, that. I'm okay with them, with them the way they are. Okay. So we do ask if you think it's too high or too low. You can give the exact dollar amount. You can give the exact dollar amount of the increase and the percentage. So as much information as available is out there. So. Okay. Do I take that as a motion? I'll make a motion to yes. As presented. Questions as presented. Okay. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, do you think there's uh, regarding the uh, re regarding the referendum on March 7th, um, May seventh? Um, do you think there would be a benefit to us to send out a postcard to all the residents saying that the referendum is on May 7th, uh, budget referendum? Would they, I mean, we certainly publicize it be, with signs and we've had go, meetings galore and it's on the website and everything. It's just, uh, you know, some towns, uh, rare, but some towns do send out postcards. I thought it was worth talking about. I, I think it's definitely worth doing because most people get their information either from Let's Talk Turkey or they look for these signs, but not everybody drives by the signs or if they drive by them, they don't notice what they say. So if you get a postcard, people can't say, well, you didn't inform me. I can get you to the water, but I can't make you drink. Right, right. And that's reading, uh, 
uh, you know, whether that's reading signs or reading a postcard. Uh, you right. know, I mean, uh, uh, one of the reasons why I, I brought it up is because we did send uh, the uh, for the bond uh, for the bond referendum. We did send out the fluorescent green postcards, uh, right. and uh, you know, we had people say, "You never told me." Yeah, that was the thing that was so shocking, and you know, you're sending them out. I'm not so sure how much of a difference it's going to make, but I agree with you. The last time people, there was correspondence in our um, selectman package that showed people that uh, we didn't know about it. And put it on that green paper and sent it out and everything. So I would be in favor of sending out as much as we can and doing the best we can to let people know. And especially when you look at the uh, town meeting last night, I think we had six folks who... To be there. Order yeah. yeah, so it's okay. Uh, but I yeah. that's my my take on it, which is one reason right. why I brought it's not it. extremely expensive. It's a bulk mailing, so yeah, I mean it costs. It does cost money. But. Well, we have to print them and uh, and, and then uh, send it. Out. I mean, it's probably yeah, seven hundred to eight hundred dollars worth right. of expense, but if I mean, not more. But it's I mean, worth it. Ends with the uh, twenty-three million dollar budget. That's I think it's definitely. Worth I think all three of us are on the same page. Yeah. So uh, there's no motion need or anything else. Uh, I'll work on a postcard and we'll get try to get it out towards the end of next week. All right. Maybe you can even try to cut, copy, and paste this whole thing so they know exactly what they're coming to. Well, the or I've got to, I've got to check with the town attorney on that. I know in a previous time we mailed things out. The town attorney was, and it was a different town attorney, um, Carl Landolina, right. and it was a specific language that he had, and he actually had me take a couple things out. Okay. So yeah, and I recall um, that whole thing too uh, from previous. Uh, times where you're able to notify people of the date and to vote, but when you put anything else in there, it can be misconstrued. Yeah, once we as a board of selectmen set the uh, the town meeting date, the no organization affiliated with the town can promote the budget. Right. Uh, but this isn't a promotion. No, this is this has come out and vote. Right. So, but I mean, I mean, yeah, we just can't. I we can't be proactive. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Uh, believe it or not, uh, that's public comment. Is number eight. Uh, seeing none. Believe it or not, uh, we've got one very short executive session. Uh, let me just let me just double check to see if what we really do or not. I think it might have been resolved with uh, Spencer was uh, in the other. Uh, here it is. Uh, yeah, real quick. Okay. We, we do have to do one real quick. Is there a motion to go into executive session at 737? I'll make that motion. Uh, and this, this is to discuss what? I think we have pending litigation. Pending litigation. Uh, those are good. Yes. 